If this sounds like the music of a car chase from, like, say, a 1970, like, something out of Starsky and Hutch. Anybody know? I didn't watch Starsky and Hutch when it was on. I watched the pilot once because it had... Anyway, if I mention Suzanne Summers, I'm going to date myself. And that's an old man. And actually, I think Suzanne Summers looks better now than when she was Chrissy Snow. But she looked pretty good when she was in the pilot episode of Starsky and Hutch. I'm going to just say that. You know, babes of yore, you know, you want to do that right there? Yeah. Maybe that thigh master is something you ought to look into. You know, it's a... <laughs> That's, it really did it for her, I'll tell you that much here. Uh, Tri-City Sports now coming in. A couple of uh, quarterback news. Uh, it came out not long ago, within the last two hours, that some bad news for Peyton Manning fans. And that is that Drew Brees signs with the Saints for two years, $50 million. Why is that bad for Peyton Manning fans? He's from New Orleans, right? I mean, maybe not as much as the Colts or the Broncos, but you'd think that was a team his dad played for. Maybe he won't be rooting for them as much as the Giants since his brother is there, but you'd think he'd like to see the Saints do well, and maybe he would. But around Game 5 of the NFL season next year, if not somewhere around Game 3, and certainly no longer than Game 6, barring injury, Drew Brees will pass Peyton Manning as the NFL's all-time leader in passing yards. And so for the people that want to say Manning is the greatest quarterback of all time, now I don't think that's going to change their mind, but another legitimate player comes into the conversation. So much of that greatest quarterback of all time is what era you are from. I mean, let's face it, you know, Sammy Baugh probably did as much for football as Babe Ruth did for baseball, but nobody talks about Sammy Baugh being the greatest quarterback of all time. You know, just the era, how many people are left around that actually saw him play, that knew him. Uh, Sammy Baugh now is somebody you read about, and you may marvel at his contributions, although, yes, Passing stats are always going to get bigger and bigger and better. You know, uh, it was, what is 30 years ago, Fran Tarkenton with 47,003 yards was the all-time leading passer. Vinny Testaverde basically met that in Mark. Vinny Testaverde. You know, equaled, I, I think he may have come a few yards shy, but he had essentially the same amount of passing yards Fran Tarkenton did. And Tarkenton had the NFL record for years and years until, I think it was Dan Marino came around. And Marino had it, then Brett Favre had it, then Peyton Manning, and now Drew Brees will have the yardage record. So that's what that is. Also, though, here's something kind of interesting. You heard about Case Keenum yesterday uh, signing with the Broncos. But it appears that the Minnesota Vikings are going to be the team that will higher, shall we say, sign, I guess, is the accurate term. They'll do both. They'll both hire and sign. Uh, in a couple of days, Kirk Cousins. Here's Adam Sheffer with the story. That'll be a landmark deal for Kirk Cousins at this point in time, but it'll be a fully guaranteed deal. It is likely to come in Minnesota. Kirk Cousins will become the highest paid quarterback in football, and it'll be a big deal. It'll be roughly $84 million. Wow. By the way, who was... A guest on the Dan Patrick show that we were listening to trying to make the argument that Tyrod Taylor was better than Kirk Cut. Really? <laughs> Did I get that right? Tyrod Taylor is better than Kirk Cousins? Huh? By the way, just one last thing about uh, Drew Brees, and uh, this also is Adam Sheffer talking about the two-year $50 million deal that the 40-year-old Drew Brees, who's showing no signs of aging, signed with the Saints. Drew Brees is going to be 39 years old this season. That's not bad for a guy who couldn't pass the physical of the Miami Dolphins when he was a free agent <laughs> and leaving San Diego. He's done all right for himself. He's done okay. Yeah. He's done okay for himself. And now he's got another deal. Could have gotten more on the open market. Never wanted to go to the open market. Wanted to be in New Orleans. Made that very clear. 
Yeah, he's, I mean, he's very active in the community. I mean, he's Mr. New Orleans, let's face it, you know. So, yeah, him leaving, that just was not going to be in the cards. I mean, you could play, Vikings were reported to be interested, but yeah, they wind up, they'll spend their money on Cousins. Uh, Sam Bradford may wind his way up with the Buffalo Bills now that they've dealt Tyrod Taylor to the Cleveland Browns. And, you know, I know the Browns making a lot of moves and a lot of people, oh, yeah, the Browns are picking up, you know, this, this player on the end. They got Tyrod Taylor. If they think that Tyrod Taylor is going to lead them to anything more than 5-11, and 11, even if they kill it on the draft, if they don't pick a quarterback with one of their now multitude of high draft choices. I know, they're talking Saquon Barkley, and I think they could go worse. But what in... The, Tyrod Taylor? Tyrod Taylor is up for worst quarterback in the NFL consideration. This guy was benched for Nate Peterman. With cause. Man put up three points against... Jacksonville. The next week they allowed 42 to the Steelers. I know Jacksonville has a fearsome pass rush. Taylor's sacked a lot. He's also short, can't throw from the pocket. Horrible, horrible trade. Uh, but it got, it, let's see, so I just don't get that one. Uh, the Browns are making all kinds of moves, by the way. Uh, one thing I would like to point out also, the uh, and I looked at, at moves, William Gay, who's a corner for the Steelers, and he's been a starter for some time, is now tweeting out that he believes he'll be cut. Uh, look for a couple of moves. There's a chance, an odd chance, that Ramon Foster, later the Tennessee Volunteers, he's due to make $2.1 million uh, next year, and a lot of people think that's a lot to pay for a guard who was drafted in the seventh round, and I agree so he may be a free agent very shortly. There's also, if you're looking at the Steelers, a school of thought that says Josh Dobbs might become the number two quarterback next year because Landry Jones, who is the backup to Ben Roethlisberger up there, is set to make $1.9 million. And Landry Jones has never really impressed that much, uh, save for a flash here or there, with the Steelers as a backup quarterback. And so, but the thing is, is that Josh Dobbs played horribly in the preseason. And so, yeah, you get the idea that eventually maybe they'd like Dobbs to be the backup there in Pittsburgh and see if he can eventually take over. But right now, uh, after the preseason, he put up just not ready. And Landry Jones, slowly but surely, seems to be improving. It's just he will certainly not be the quarterback he was at Oklahoma. Uh, so that's the case with that. Anyway, that's some of the NFL news uh, coming up. Tomorrow, big show, Keith Mr. Jennings. He has a documentary out about the 1990s. ETSU basketball teams. I'll be talking to him. And the next day, I'll talk to Scott Carter, the AD of ETSU. Nobody covers the Bucks better than me. Tri City Sports Now. Colin Coward is next. See you tomorrow at noon. WBMB.